Hello and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Courtney and my channel is all about connecting with crystals, learning about their metaphysical benefits, and really just becoming aware of this unique energy that's available to all of us. So thank you for joining me. Today, I'm so excited to dive into my yearly Q&A video. I asked you guys, you know, what are some things you want to know about me? Any questions you have? I would love to answer them in an upcoming Q&A. So I have here a list of questions. I think I pretty much got all of them and we're just going to dive into today's video. <laughs> If you are a returning subscriber, let me know by liking this video right now, or if you're just excited to listen to this Q&A, give me a big like, it really does help me out. So before I dive in, I want to just say hey. I hope you guys have had a wonderful kind of like winter break. Um, I feel like it's been very restorative since the winter solstice and the holidays came and went. So I hope that you all are feeling restored and rejuvenated and are feeling good as we start to get back into this swing of things. Alrighty, so let's dive into the first question. When's the date of your big special day? Will you incorporate crystals in your wedding? Will you do a mini vlog on your wedding? I'd really, I really enjoy your videos. My wedding day is on December 2nd, 2023. So it is approaching, I'm starting to plan it right now. And yes, I do plan on incorporating crystals in the wedding. And yes, I do plan on filming a vlog and sharing it here. So you guys will see everything that happens on my wedding day leading up to it. Don't worry, I got you. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to really manifest this wedding this year. That's a big part of my 2023 is manifesting this wedding. It's already off to a great start with everything, my location and my dress. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I will definitely be filling you guys in on that. This next question is a really good question. Do you ever doubt the practice of crystal healing and their energies? And if so, what do you do to remain focused and consistent with your practice? I would honestly say I've never doubted crystal energy. And I know that a lot of people can easily kind of dismiss crystal energy and honestly it's it is something that's hard to explain especially to someone that doesn't have an open mind and honestly with crystal healing crystal energy metaphysics you have to have an open mind that's like the first thing I talk about when someone asks me about crystals maybe I'm meeting them for the first time you know I, I tell them you have to have an open mind in this if you don't believe in it nothing's going to happen you know you have to have that connection with your crystals I would definitely love to dive into this question and make a whole video on this because I know this is like a big one, especially when people kind of like are kind of bringing down crystals, like saying like, why do you believe in this? You know, like I get it. I totally get it. I don't judge people if they don't believe in it. You know, it's, it's just to each his own. Um, but I personally don't really feel like I've ever really doubted it. I've always trusted it. Um, my advice to someone to remain focused and consistent with their crystal practice is to keep believing in it. You know, don't listen to someone that's influencing your energy not to believe in it because when you don't believe in it, that's when you don't feel a connection. Next question, how can I use things like this to overcome mental blocks? I'm a gymnast mentally struggling. So I would say, how can I use things like this? You're probably re referring to crystals and also just spirituality practices. Um, I would say overcoming mental blocks. So if you currently struggle with focusing, maybe with meditating, with studying, um, you really want to work with third eye chakra crystals, crown chakra crystals. Um, my favorite is fluorite. Um, you might also want to work with some solar plexus um, crystals. And if you can, find a combination between, you know, a solar, plus, a solar plexus chakra crystal and a third eye chakra crystal. Sunset Sodalite, for example, hits both of those chakras and it's fantastic for uh, mental clarity, for determination. Um, I really, really love that crystal. Um, I would say if you had to find a practice, I know it might be hard for you to meditate, but if you can, spend like give yourself a goal to just meditate for two minutes and then do that for like a week or a couple days and then increase it by like a minute or two. Keep building up a practice with meditation because that's really what I think gives me a lot of focus and clarity in my life. So definitely try it out with baby steps and work your way up and see 
you know, if your energy or your focus enhances during that time frame. Next question, I would like to know more about shadow work and exactly how to do this and when is the best time to manifest? So I have a whole video on shadow work. I'm just going to throw it out there. You can definitely check that out. I'll link it right now. Um, I kind of dive into what shadow work is um, and exactly how you can dive into your shadow. Um, I personally believe you can dive into shadow work willingly or sometimes it just pops up and you have to face it and deal with it. Um, definitely reference that video, but shadow work in essence is working on issues that you kind of hide within yourself that you don't like to talk about, you don't want to bring it up, and it, it causes blockages in your life when you don't, you know, confront your shadow. We all have a shadow. We all have things about ourselves that we kind of want to keep private, we don't want to admit to people, or maybe we went through something traumatic and we don't ever want to think about it again or reprogram our brain to, a, you know, kind of, kind of relive that situation, but choosing like another way of reacting or responding or something like that it's different for everybody um that kind of like is what shadow work is is dealing with that and kind of like finding the light in the shadow um as far as when is the best time to manifest um honestly you can manifest at any time um if i had to pinpoint like a specific time frame i would say you know during the new moon um, the waxing crescent phase, the new moon, those are great times to manifest because we're starting a new lunar cycle and the moon has so much power with manifesting. Um, so those are my, that's my advice for you. <laughs> Next question. Do you have some tips on how to cleanse and charge small crystal chips like peridot, the very, very small crystal grid crystals? That's a great question. Yes. What I would do is since since they're so small, like Peridot, for example, it's so super teeny tiny. You don't really want to use water. You don't really want to like put them in rice. Um, you don't really want to mess with them too much. So I think the easiest thing to do is to use smoke. So if you have like incense, you can just put the incense above it, around it, let the smoke carry away energy from those crystals. Um, and then also just, you know, charging them in the moonlight. That's kind of like the easiest thing I think you can do to cleanse and charge really, really small crystal chips. Okay, next question. What made you start this channel and what's your motivation point that keeps you going? That's a great question. Um, what made me start this channel? I just had this idea to do this. You know, it was back in like, oh gosh, like 2018, 2019. I've been thinking about it and in 2020, I finally did it. Um... I just wanted to share knowledge with people. I wanted to talk about crystals um, and just hear what you guys, you know, are experiencing. I wanted to build a community here online and express myself in a creative way. I'm a very creative person. I love film production. I love editing. I love all this kind of stuff. So it seems like the perfect thing for me to do. It's definitely my passion. And that's really what is my motivation. That's what keeps me going is because I love doing this so much. When you find something that brings you joy and you feel, you feel really fulfilled in the fact that you're also helping someone else in this process, you know, someone on their crystal journey or spiritual journey, like that's the best feeling. That's like what really motivates me to keep going is my connection with you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, next question. When placing a black tourmaline crystal in each corner of a room, do you have to do anything else to activate the crystal grid? How do you do that? So I would say when you are placing crystals strategically in your home, like black tourmaline, and you put them in all the corners and you're creating like a vortex or, you know, a grid for your home, you know, activating it is all within you. You know, it's, it's about you stating it, you know, claim it, you know, let's say I just put down four black tourmaline in my home and maybe I go back to the front and I proclaim, I, I call forth protection and prosperity in my home. You know, that's your activation. Um, you declaring it to the universe. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Alrighty. Next question. Which crystal is best for manifesting a new home? Where do I start? Ooh, that sounds so fun. Um, I got to say when it comes to like, I mean, that's a big investment. That's a lot of money. That's something where you want to probably use a money crystal. Um, in this sense, I would say the best crystal, if I was manifesting a home, I would be working with citrine. I think citrine would be great for this. Um, you can even, you know, do crystal pairings with other, um, money stones like pyrite and citrine. 
um, where to start, I would start by setting the intention with your crystal. So let's say you bought some citrine. You're like, okay, I'm going to work with citrine. I'm going to manifest this house, get your citrine, cleanse it and set your intention with it. And then whenever you are like house hunting, or, you know, you might have a call with a realtor, have that crystal with you. Whenever you're doing anything that's relating to you getting that house, have your citrine crystal with you. Another thing I would suggest that doesn't involve crystals is really visualize in your head what this house is that you want. This helps you attract it into your life. Even better thing that you can do if you maybe live close to the neighborhood where you want to have a house, you know, walk around there, you know, drive out there on like a weekend and like just go on a walk like you would if you already live there and you're just going on your little, you know, like weekend walk and you're like, I live here. Like this is where I go to go on a walk. It will help program your brain, the manifestation that you are going to end up there. I did this with both of my apartments here in LA and I think that's like the biggest hack with manifesting like a new home in your life. (laughs) Okay, next question. If you could only have one crystal, which one would you choose and why? Only one? Um, that's a great question. Honestly, if I could only have one crystal for the rest of my life, I would probably have a clear quartz, like a point of clear quartz. I just love quartz crystals. And it's just the master healer. It's great. It helps you literally like manifest anything. So it would be so sad to only have one. But if I could only have one, I would pick a clear quartz. (laughs) All right. Next question. When you say you've worked with a crystal, what do you mean? What do you do when you work with a crystal? That's a good question. And I know this is something that a lot of people in this space will say like, work with this stone and blah, 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 blah. When someone references work, like work with a crystal, work with a stone, that is the action that you're doing with the crystal. Let's say you want to open your third eye and you need to work more. My mouth just made a weird noise. You want to work more with amethyst or labradorite to open your third eye chakra or to get more intuitive thoughts or open up your psychic center. You're going to be working with Labradorite more. So that could mean you're meditating more with it. That could mean that you are just holding it and having it around you more. That could mean that maybe you like to do a crystal ritual and you want to have this crystal in a certain area in your home and you have an offering or whatever you like to do, you know, whatever you choose the action with your crystal, that is your work with the crystal. I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments. Maybe that could be a future video um, for me to talk about more. Um, But yeah. (laughs) Next question. What is the best gem? What are the best gemstones for mental health? Honestly, I'm a really big fan of black obsidian. It has a way of working with our shadow um, and helping us really come out of it in a positive, healthy way. Also, I feel like if you struggle with anxiety, um, lapidolite can be wonderful. Um, Amethyst in general is good with kind of like calming our nerves um, and any kind of like mental health issue. I think amethyst is a great one. So those are probably my top three, black obsidian, lapidolite, and amethyst. Work with those, see how you feel. Next question. How long do you usually work with a crystal? Do you cycle through them regularly? I would say, you know, I do these monthly, you know, crystal videos, uh, energy videos for the astrology too. I would say it really depends, but I would say like every 30 days, I probably will cycle out of a certain crystal. And when I do work with crystals, I'm working with multiple crystals at one time. Um, I could be working with three crystals with three different intentions during that month. And then maybe I want to keep working with two of them following into the next month, but I want to switch out. Maybe something happened and I want to start incorporating a new one. I'll just cycle them out that way. It really just depends on when you feel like you're kind of done working with that stone. It's totally based on the individual. Um, but I would say, you know, every one to three months I am cycling out through, um, my crystals working with them. Next question. Most powerful crystals in your opinion? Probably tactites, (laughs) moldavite, super powerful. 
And honestly, I got to say like heart chakra crystals, those are super powerful. When we're doing heart chakra work, big changes can happen and it's very profound. You know, when we're working at our heart center and we're like diving into like love and our emotions, that's when we can have the biggest changes in our life. So I'd say heart chakra crystals are very powerful as well. Alrighty, next question. Can we gift our loved ones a protective crystal? Yes, absolutely. You can totally gift a friend, a loved one, a protective crystal. I kind of like to tell them like, hey, this is a protective crystal. I felt like you would like having this energetic support around you. You could place it somewhere where you'll see it every day in your home or wherever you like, you know, just give it up to them, kind of tell them a little bit about what it does. Um, I think it's fun to gift crystals to people. Um, And if you like wanted to pick um, a specific crystal for someone, you could even tell them like why. You could be like, I really thought this would be great for you because I know you've been struggling a lot at work and this is supposed to give you more motivation and new ideas. So I hope that it can bring you really good energy, you know, it makes it feel like you really thought about why you gifted them that crystal. So absolutely, you can totally gift um, loved ones a protective stone. Next question. The very first crystal I had, the very first crystal I had, I actually was gifted some crystals for Valentine's Day back in like 2017, I think from my fiance and he gave me a few uh, I think he gave me like four crystals or something like that but definitely one of the first ones that I started working with was was rose quartz and then I believe I also got an amethyst and a citrine and I think I got a strawberry quartz or something like that those were like the first ones I ever had (laughs) Alrighty, we are making our way down this list we are nearing towards the end Uh, Next question, how to manifest YouTube success? (laughs) Um, I would say if you feel like you want to start a YouTube channel, I I mean, I felt like I wanted to start one years before I actually did it. Um, To set yourself up for success, I think you have to really narrow down what it is that you want to talk about and like list out like 20 videos. Having a successful strategy or just giving yourself Um, preparation as you go into creating YouTube content is going to be like the number one like key thing to keeping you on track and keeping your creative flow going. Um, YouTube success is different for everybody. Um, You know, me just giving a few tips on like actually like doing a channel, I would say, you know, making that list, um, practicing you know your first couple videos aren't going to be amazing but like keep going and you really do have to be consistent you have to make this um like part of your life in a way um you have to dedicate certain days to film to edit to create content you know that's part of youtube success um if if i'm looking at it from like a spirituality you know how to manifest success on youtube i would say You want to be manifesting like not the numbers. That's not what you want to manifest. You want to manifest the connection. You want to manifest building a community. You want to manifest your channel reaching so many people and helping so many people or making someone laugh no matter, you know, depending on what your channel is about. It is literally about manifesting that and not so much the numbers. That can be part of it, you know, but true success with YouTube, I feel like is building a connection with people. That is what YouTube success is to me. Now this success to someone else could be completely different. You know, maybe it's having a million subscribers or becoming famous or whatever it may be, you know, whatever your version of success is, it could be different from someone else, but that's kind of like my tips on how to manifest YouTube success. (laughs) Okay. Next question. If you were to discover your dream crystal, what color would it be and what properties would it have? (laughs) Um, honestly, I feel like my dream crystal would be like this really cool, like maybe like icy blue color. Maybe there's like some kind of like rain, like amazing rainbows in it. And honestly, it's metaphysical properties would be like every time I had this crystal with me at bedtime, like if I had it under my pillow, it would literally be like, I would have a dream where I was flying. (laughs) That would be its metaphysical power. That's, that's what I would manifest. That'd be my dream crystal. Cause I love when I can fly in my dreams. So if there was a crystal out there, every time that I slept with it, it gave me a flying dream. That'd be amazing. (laughs) 
Alrighty, next question. Did you grow up with a specific faith or religion? Yes, I grew up in a Christian household. I will say I'm not very religious. Um, I'm more spiritual, but yeah, I think it's not something, it's something that I appreciate. I'm glad that I, you know, was able to experience, you know, having more religion in my life. You know, it's definitely dissipated as I've gotten older. I'm just kind of a free spirit in that sense. Um, But I definitely respect and admire anyone's faith and religion. I think it's really beautiful, but yeah. (laughs) Okay, next question. What plants do you have? So funny story, um, the plant that has always been in in the background of my videos for like the past two years recently since moving to this apartment there's not as much light in here where I would place this plant so unfortunately it's not doing so well I'm kind of like (laughs) rehabbing it a little bit I had to cut all of its like this is basically the plant it was and I propagated some of their vines or whatever but yeah just the lighting in here isn't as as good for where I wanted to place it but anyway, that's um, a, a pathos. I also have a neon pathos. I have a snake plant. I have a money tree. I have like a little baby cactus. And then I have like a monstera um, plant that is my fiance's favorite plant in the world. And it's growing like crazy. It's so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Those are all my plants. <laughs> Next question. What's your favorite thing that happened to you in 2022? getting engaged. (laughs) All right, next question. I just bought some real citrine towers. They are a little smoky. Has a little bit of a brown color with yellow. Is this smoky quartz in the citrine or is that just how citrine crystals are? So citrine crystals can vary. Um, You know, they're the smoky quartz and citrine, you know, remember they're both like quartz crystals. So they kind of start off with this clear color. And then depending on how hot they are, you know, in the earth, it's going to affect their color. So I've always thought, you know, if you can find a smoky citrine, those are really powerful for manifesting because it has such a grounding element mixed in with this manifestation element. It helps ground your manifestations. And honestly, I I really do like smoky citrine. If you have a smoky citrine, that's that's really great. (laughs) Next question. Do you ever see electronics glitching while holding or using crystals? Um, I don't think that's ever happened for me to be honest, but I do notice when I'm holding my cell phone and then I put it down and I pick up like black obsidian and I just hold it in my hands for like a couple minutes and then I put the black, black, uh, tourmaline down. I do feel like a slight tingle in my hands and I feel like it might have something to do with the EMFs. I don't know, but that's like the only thing I've ever really noticed with crystals and electronics is physically in my hands. I felt like a tingle. So I don't know. Okay, I'm going to do some rapid fire questions and answers really quickly because these were like grouped together. (laughs) So here we go. When making a big crystal move, how to store, pack, and cleanse crystals. When I moved into this apartment, I literally just got a box and I used towels to like layer the crystals on top of like a towel. I put a towel down. I put like five crystals there, whatever, however many you have. Then I put a towel on top of it and then I put crystals on top and then I layered another towel on there. Get like a thick towel, like a beach towel um, and just do that. That's what I did and I was pretty lucky with nothing breaking, although everything like I was only moving like a mile away from my old apartment. So if you're like flying, I I would say definitely like use more towels. You know, towels are great. That's what I used when I was boxing up my crystals. (laughs) Um, Okay, next question. When a crystal breaks, is it different for different crystals? Um, No, I would say when a crystal breaks in general, it just means that that intention, your work with that crystal, it's complete. You can no longer work with that stone. Um, It's a sign of of an ending. Maybe it's a sign of a new beginning. Um, You know, some crystals I've heard like when malachite breaks, it means something. You know, there might be a lore for certain crystals when they break. Um, But basically, it just means that your intention is complete with that stone. When giving a crystal as a gift, what's to be considered? 
Um, I would say, you know, depending on your relationship with that person, you can kind of self-reflect and think, you know, what energy do they need more of in their life? Maybe they need to relax more. Um, maybe they need, maybe they need more self-love. Maybe they need more protection. Maybe they're an empath, you know, whatever it may be, kind of self-reflect on what energy they could use more of in their life and then pick a crystal that matches that energy. What are the use or meanings of crystal pendulums? So crystal pendulums are... I have one. I really don't use it that much, but it is a divination tool. It's something that you ask, you know, a question to. You kind of kind of like find yourself in a quiet state and it is literally a like a connection between you and your guides. So you would have your pendulum. I, I think I've done like a little shorts video on this before. Um, on how to use one. If you're curious, you can check out my shorts, but you basically just tie the pendulum around your finger, ask it a yes or no question, um, and see which way it moves. Um, you kind of want to see what, what means yes, what means no. So you might ask the pendulum beforehand, you know, show me yes. So you know what movement means yes, what movement means no. And then you go in and ask questions. That's kind of like the main, um, use with pendulums you're using it for divination all ready and my very last question that i have here again thank you guys so much for submitting questions i love doing this i think it's fun to kind of just you know do a little q a so you guys can connect with me more i can answer your questions so thank you guys so much for um, submitting questions so this last question is what's the most profound spiritual moment you've ever experienced that's a great question and honestly when I self-reflect on something that feels the greatest, that's a hard one. Definitely on your spiritual journey, you're going to go through multiple spiritual awakenings and each one will feel special and different and unique to you. Um, I would say probably the most profound spiritual moment was probably before I even knew what spirituality was. Um, And this kind of ties in with shadow work. You know, there was a period in my life where I really didn't like myself and I wanted to change and I wanted to like myself. So I chose to take the steps to love myself more. And because I chose to work on myself and discover what self-love was, I was able to completely change my life in every aspect And that was before I knew what spirituality was. And looking back, you know, that it was a spiritual experience. I didn't even know what spirituality was, but I was going through some sort of awakening at that time. Yeah, when you're in a dark place and you decide to change your life, to work on the things that bring you down or are constant, you know, triggers around you, when you find that you are done with that, you know, it's all something in our head that tells us these things that aren't true. So for me, that was my most profound moment was like saying no to that and believing in myself and finding self-love and changing my life. So there you go. All righty guys. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you did not get to submit a question and you want to ask me something, I am more than happy to answer it in the comment section of this video. So please do not be shy. (laughs) I am so glad that we got to hang out and spend some fun time together. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big like and I'm wishing you the best and I will see you in my next one.